Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the stuff from Lost Origin, make sure you check out the Potown store. You can get a 5% discount on your order using that code OmniPoke. For today's video, we are going to be looking at Hisuian Gudra V-Star, a really interesting new card from the Lost Origin expansion. And I feel like a lot of people are playing this wrong, actually. I've, I've got some pretty strong opinions on this deck. I do feel like it will certainly be a contender in the metagame, because the stats on this card are very, very strong. We're going to be leaning into this rolling iron attack for water, metal, and colorless. We do a flat 200, and we take 80 less damage from attacks during our next turn. That's very, very good and really pushes that 270 threshold that we have on Gudra into much higher hit point thresholds, which is amazing. It means you sit around on the board for a good amount of time, especially when you focus in on the V-Star power here. The Moisture Star ability allows us to completely heal all damage from this Pokemon for free. And I think that is nutty, to be honest. It's a very, very good effect. Thanks to the Rolling Iron, we stick around on the board pretty easily. We can tank a lot of attacks, really. And having a Moisture Star at any point in the game just gives you a free turn guaranteed, which is really awesome. I think it's an amazing internal package. And I think this card is strong enough that just play a tempo deck. Just make sure the deck is working, get Rolling Iron out on turn two, and that's it. You don't need all the fancy new other tricks that can come alongside this card. Just be a rolling pin. Do it every single turn. Got to roll that iron as much as possible. And uh, also have Greninja as the backup. I think it's one of the most integral pieces here. Uh, because a flat 200 is a really, really good number. It means that with a Moonlight Shuriken, you can finish off a V-Star and also set up the next one as well. So your prize map is identified really easily with Greninja and Gudra together. And you must be asking how you get the Shuriken rolling. That's the beauty of the Mirage Gate here. You can accelerate to a Greninja all in one turn and get a Shuriken out of nowhere. So... In some instances, the opponent may not be playing around it with Manaphy. And even if they are, we play uh, a decent size amount of boss in here. So you can boss up Manaphy, KO it, and then try and do a Moonlight Shuriken in a similar vein or a V-Star. And also like another one prize Pokemon like Sobbles and Drizars and that sort of thing. So I think Greninja is very, very strong as a partner here. It lets us draw in the opening stages and throughout the game, which is insane. It's a Melanie enabler, which is also really important for us. And it's a great attacker. So I think Radiant Greninja, you know, I shouldn't have to sell you on how good of a card Radiant Greninja is. Uh, but in this deck, it works wonders, especially because you can Mirage Gate and make it an attacking threat here. So yeah, the Gudra, the Radiant Greninja work really nicely together. The flat 200 is a great number with Choice Belt as well. Pushing to 230 um, then means that the Radiant Greninja can finish off 310 hit point Pokemon as well, which is insane. So Mew is in much more danger. Um, and also it means you can boss, belt, KO uh, other two prizes before they evolve as well. So really like this flat 200, I think it's an amazing number, and that reduction just gives us so much time. Think about an Arceus deck that every now and then tries to use Sharon's Care to pick itself up and heal. Um, well, now we have even more health effectively with the 80 reduction compared to like a big charm on an Arceus, and you have an inbuilt Sharon's Care just like threatened constantly throughout the game. So it's almost like playing an Arcintel, but in a much more aggressive way is how I'm sort of thinking about it. There are a couple attacks on the regular V as well. Slip and Trip can do 60, and your opponent switches their active. And Rolling Shell, if you've missed your V star, could do 140 and reduce 30. Uh, not great. So you really are trying to weave in the V star as much as possible and just use that Rolling Iron over and over again. We are playing the Lost Zone engine, like I mentioned, Mirage Gate is a great way to accelerate, not just to the Greninja, but also to the Gudra. It does require us to have seven or more cards in our Lost Zone, so we will be playing Chorus's Experiments, which can help us get there, as well as the Confei Cram Package, where we have Flower Selecting to give us some consistency in the opening stages to look through more cards in our deck, but also throw things into the Lost Zone to build up towards Mirage Gate. And we have a Cramorant in here as well as an additional one prize attacking threat. Obviously helps us get through Mill Tank, of course, and can also work really nicely with a Rolling Iron, where you do an addition, like you do the 110 first, then you go into your Gudra. Um, and if you miss things like your Melanie attached or don't quite get to seven, you can still get to four pretty handily and get your Cramorant in there pretty quickly. So a really nice backup guy that we can have at our disposal. So the items are really just similar almost to Giratina, where we just want to get the job done. We have the VIPs in here. We have lots of nets and switches. We are quite weird on our ball search. You can see no quick ball in here whatsoever. We just have the VIPs and the captures. 
Um, but I feel like that's good enough because Capture Energy is so much better than Quick Ball throughout the mid game because it's fodder for your concealed cards. It can also be attached retreated for confes while you're just selecting in your opening stages. So uh, I prefer it to Quick Ball quite a lot actually. And the Ultras chip in for additional outs in the opening stages for your Gudras, but also can get the V Star, of course, which is important. Uh, I'm only on three Mirage Gates because we have Melanie as a backup as well. And as I just said, thanks to the reduction of damage from Rolling Iron, uh, he sits on board for a couple turns. You can manually attach your way to another Gudra pretty comfortably without the need for the gate. So I'm getting rid of a lot of the fluffy cards, like the fourth Mirage Gate, the Fantinas, uh, defensive cards like Big Charms and Tool Jammers and that sort of thing. I think it's all fluff. I think you just do enough with Gudra in general. Uh, I really like Training Court for Greninja use, of course. Um, I really like the Rod in here as well to reuse Greninja or Cram if need be, and also put energies back into the deck for Mirage Gate. And yeah, keeping things simple, the slightly higher boss count to most. Uh, the Melanie is in here as well. Similar to how I like having Leafeon V-Star in Giratina, so you're not uh, punished by missing out on Mirage Gate. You can also use Melanie in this instance to uh, get yourself to a Guja pretty quickly as well. So, yeah, really like the Melanie in here. Also, I've even debated a Raihan as an alternate way to get Greninja going, but at the moment I just like the high count of Melanie as a backup supporter to keep drawing through the deck with Chorus. Works really nicely with Confei and Greninja where you're trying to accumulate a hand size and the Melanie can help you get there pretty easily. So, yeah, Tempo Gudra. It's probably not the way that you were thinking about this deck intuitively, and I've seen a lot of other things. I've already made my stance pretty clear on which Radiant is better, but I do see a lot of people going for the Gardevoir. It's just a reduction of damage, but you're basically saying no to like eight to 10 cards throughout a game and one of the best spread attackers that we have available to us that also fits really nicely with the math of Rolling Iron. So you probably should be playing the Greninja instead. Uh, there are some other attackers you can play in here as well if you really wanted to, just because of the versatility of Mirage Gate. Like we could see things like Snorlax coming into the list as well. Um, this card is really growing on me more and more. Very, very just solid card to deal with one prize Pokemon when need be. Uh, the reason why I don't have Fantina, interestingly enough, is that I feel like the 80 reduction makes you tanky enough against the majority of the format. And Fantina only blocks from V Pokemon. And strangely enough, like I feel like the Gudra is going to struggle more against one prizes. Um, where the reduction is obviously helpful, but you need to get through so many individual cards that it can slowly like chip away at you. So I think the Fantine is kind of superfluous. I would much prefer, actually, a Cheryl. If you want to go for a defensive build, I feel like Cheryl and going back up to, back up to the fourth Mirage Gate, maybe even putting in a second Rod, is going to be better, uh, because you can obviously Cheryl Gate in the same turn and get straight back into the action. So... Those are the real things I'm debating. Um, you can go for defensive tools, but I think, again, I, I've made my case for choice, but it allows you to boss so much more aggressively on two prizes for free, which is just insane. And it has great math into V stars, uh, sorry, V maxes as well. So it just makes too much sense for me, to be honest. So let's get into some games. Uh, hopefully, the tempo goo is going to sell you where we basically just have less bad cards in our opening stages. We can hit our Gudra attacking turn two much more often thanks to the Melanies being in here. And uh, yeah, we're just kind of a chilled out good time all around rolling like every turn, basically. <laughs> the rolling pin is in action. Because uh, I do think this has kind of been misconstrued as a tanking deck when I think tanking is kind of invalidated when Giratina V-Star is a card, right? It has Star Requiem. Uh, that just gets through any amount of hit points possible. And rather than me just playing like big parasols as like a one or two of that I have to dig and hit in time before Giratina does like its normal deck strategy, and even then they can play Lost Vacuum, like why would I do all those things when I could just be a tempo deck instead, just get the ball rolling faster uh, and just be more consistent rather than just get completely invalidated by what could be one of the top decks in the game in Giratina. So, yeah. That's a big ramble. I've I've got some real opinions on Gudra, mostly because I really like the card and I think there's so much to enjoy about this deck. Um, but also because I think there's a lot of discussion about it and how it should be played. And so far I've I've disagreed with the majority. <laughs> so I'm always a contrarian. I'll always try and bring you the deck in the best way that I see the game. And that's kind of where I'm at right now with it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully it doesn't fall flat on its face. We have a pretty good start. We're going first here. Um, really, we want to try and find a capture or a VIP. 
pretty early so I can get Greninja getting rid of water energy. That's kind of the biggest thing here. An early flower select captures exactly what we want. That is fantastic. So I can get a Greninja use here. As long as it's in the deck, of course. And it is. We have two Goos, one Gudra. V is in the prize cards. That's okay. Have all three gates. Prize the boss. And we have two metal currently in the deck. Definitely something to track. Don't know what we're up against just yet, because I see double confey. But you always conceal the water first, because it then unlocks Melanie for us to have a perfect turn next turn. We even even have the V-Star for next turn. I'm going to slap down Choice Belt to play around uh, Hand Disruption. But Hand is honestly pretty nutty right now. I could see myself netting just for another Greninja play here. Um... But I feel like I can hold the hand. I feel like our hand is just so strong right now. The only other debate is to like go into Greninja just in case they're playing like Cramorant and you can get an early Cram on us. Because double comp is a really strong start. But I think that's like kind of overplaying at this point. So let's just pass. But yeah, really, really strong uh, turn one for us. You can see why I like the Melanie. Like straight away, I've only got one card in the Lost Zone, but I'm already threatening that turn to attack. Um, and the opponent's going to start using their own flower shenanigans here. Got rid of a couple quick balls, so they definitely have a good opening. They at least have some basics. Yeah, more quick balls coming out. Getting a yeah, ton of ball search in their opening hand. Must be nice. Oh, it's a mirror. Okay. So in mirror, we're low-key a little unfavored because I play the tempo stuff and they play the likely the more defensive stuff. So we'll see how this goes, actually. This should be interesting. Um, let's do this. Let's get rid of a Ultra Ball. Let's Greninja again. Let's play the Melanie. But look, we're doing the thing. We're doing the stuff. We are literally rolling. And yeah, they concede, right? So <laughs> just because we got a turn two goo out, and it's way harder for them to get to Mirage Gate, right? If they they were down to one Confe and they had to get a lot of things still into the Lost Zone, they got two Quick Balls in the Lost Zone only, and they had to have like they would have been able to, or they would have been forced to. Colrus and Confey a bunch, even to get response KO. So us just hitting first is good enough sometimes. Obviously, we went first, which is a big deal. Um, but if we were to go second there, we had alternate lines as well. So one of those things. Just get rolling, literally, is, is a strat that we're looking for. Would have been an awesome hand to have here. Jeez. Um, that's always the dream of VIP. VIP, very, very strong. Obviously, always, but very good when you want to use multiple confes and whatnot. All right, we're staring down a sobble. More sobs. Capture from them. It's going to be a Palkia with some capture energies. It sure is. All right, Gooch is a pretty good pickup. Allows me to be a little bit more aggressive my capture energy here. And again, we have the Greninja. Such an important card. This is going to let me see seven cards this turn. Because I can Melanie and Conceal and then Flower Select. So that's awesome. Get the second Gudra, which is a weight off my shoulders. Let's, yeah, let's do the Melanie first. Alright. Don't need Hisuian, need the V Star for next turn, so that's a pretty easy choice. Uh, so the only concern right now is I don't have access to Metal Energy, but I have seven digs for it next turn. I have Colrus plus Greninja. And I'm basically never getting blocked because I have the stuff. Uh, the question is, do I want to... Oh, I can't slip and drip because I've got the uh, the capture. So I think we're just chilling here. Um, 
maybe a small debate to retreating out of Confey again to go into Greninja to try and block an easy candy prize from him. Kind of like it, honestly. Losing Greninja early is kind of sus, though. I lose some draw from it as well. I guess I still see the seven cards. I, I think I should block the the easy prize, honestly. Because it's so obvious for him to do a candy intel play, right? He attached the capture intentionally for that play. So I think Protect Conf is a decent shout here. Makes their turn far worse. They might have to weave in a Ziggy now. Um, or I can invalidate a lot of their damage by just netting next turn. <clears throat> All right, we are going to see the incense. Could easily be Drizzle here that then gets Irida for Candy Intel. Actually going to be the Palkia. Interesting. Okay, so they already had the Irida. They go Drizzle plus Candy. They are going to go dealing into the active. I can't remember if candy builds are more or less likely to play Zigzagoon. We'll see. Well, quick ball level ball gives me a good idea that they're going to get a Zig here. as well as more Sobbles. Hmm, interesting. Perhaps not. They can still get the Zig off this. Or they could just go Bucket. They want to get more water in the bin, I'm sure. Senses for future turns. We see the zig. No, all right, nice. We denied a prize that seems valuable to me. All right, let's. It's an ultra ball first. Then it's a conceal. So we hit the metal energy. So really need to find a net, ideally. We have all four still in there. And we hit a net, that's amazing. Don't really like Confey too much in this matchup because they can Radiant Greninja double Confey. So it's better to just pitch these and we'll let Chorus do the discard pile. Oh, sorry, the Lost Zone fill up. We can pick up this Confey. Oh, sorry, the Greninja into the Confey. Let's keep the nets. They're really good. Uh, I think I like Crystal Caving my Gudra. It protects me from random crab shenanigans, which I like. And we are rolling. Officially rolling again. Once again, using Melanie to help us get there, because we're only at four in the Lost Zone, of course. Melanie's still broken. Confirmed.
I'm going to have Melanie lined up for next turn if I want to, or I can chorus to get to six in the lost zone. <clears throat> We've been able to keep quite a tidy bench as well here. See another big dealer. I'm much happy sealing big deal than ping Inteleon. Ping Inteleon can be scary. Can indicate that they play Crabominable as well. I'm gonna see boss net from them. Alright, they go for the other goo. We do play three copies of Switch to try and help move these guys if they do get trapped, of course. And again, I could be seeing seven cards with Colrus, Greninja. I could see even more with Net as well, potentially, if I find multiple energy from the Colrus. Or I can commit the training court myself. Plenty of options. Plenty of options. Committing their star portal is pretty good news for me. It means I'm not scared of many burst attackers at this point. Also, the Greninja is far less scary now, so I could probably double Confe the board. There's their own Manaphy, so they're very aware of our Greninja threat, which is clever from them. It's going to be 200 damage. Let's reduce that real quick. Let's see a couple cards from Greninja. Okay, uh, let's play the Colrus. We do Whiff Switch, which is a little ugly. So, what is our play now? I can Greninja again with Net to try and hit it. Uh, I think I like the Cram option. I think I like just having more energies, honestly. That puts us to five, six, seven, so I don't really need to chorus any more. I've already got another one in hand. Uh, let's do this. Would be a pretty sizable whiff, to be honest with you. Yeah, okay, nice. Panicking a little bit, but we did get there. <laughs> In the end. I've already lost the boss, haven't I? Oh, I don't. It's, it's in hand. Do I like the boss? Yeah, boss is fine. So Mirage Gate is open for me now, but they have just put down the Manaphy. So I think we're just going here, here, and let's roll. <clears throat> they are down a boss, but of course they still have a lot of cross-switcher plays available to them. I like the, the sort of ticking clock we've got with Crystal Cave going on here as well. Might force them, force the hand to use a gust effect earlier. If he just swings into the active, I'm pretty sure I just moisture star and hit again. If I'm feeling greedy, I could always just our boss Manaphy. It gets me onto even prizes anyway, and then threatens the Greninja to be devastating for them. So that's always an option. I obviously kept the Mirage Gate in hand, because I don't want to fully commit to this Greninja just yet. 
Ah, they are going cross switching. More deals coming in. I guess I'm going to try and bounce the crystal cave here. Uh, more nets, okay. Oh, so they're not going in with the Inteleon, they're coming back into Damaged Boy. Are they going to look to V-Star here? Oh, sorry, evolve into a V-Star? They've already used their power, of course. Yeah, they are. Okay. And they can take the knock here. Have a few interesting options, to be honest with you. Um, I think I like Boss Manaphy the best. Because it makes the Greninja so dangerous. And it keeps me off Roxanne as well. Um, I think I do this just to play around Marnie, honestly. I guess two isn't the same as three. Uh, do I want to draw any cards? Not really. I think I just hold everything and rolling iron. So you can see what we're going for here. We're trying to set up both Palkias for the 200 play. Or at least, like, next turn I can just Moisture Star, Switch, Shuriken, these two boys. As long as the Manaphy doesn't come back. And then they're in a whole heap of trouble. Right now, it looks very important for them to Marnie me if they play it. Gonna see a V-Star from them. Gonna see a Bucket. They're pretty locked into their Palkias attacking. I've only played one boss so far. Marnie Path sounds pretty important for them, actually. We had a very clear route to victory without this combination, so it's important for them to hit this. I've only played one stadium so far, so we still have another court in here. Alright, and they're just going to hit us. A switch card would have been the most busted thing here. Um, but we're definitely going to heal up. Um, I think I like just benching this stuff as well. Do I like making more goo? Not particularly. I think I just do this. Forces them to boss up the Radiant Greninja, but that's a really bad play for them, right? Because they're on four prize cards. It also opens up me to Comfey to start finding bosses that I really need for game.
They played Melanie, so they need to hit cross switcher here for us to not win immediately. If they don't V-star, it doesn't even help them because I can just come back in and do rolling iron again. Yeah, so that's game. Very nice. Couple nice wins with Gudra. Yeah. Uh, let's get one more game in, I guess, because the first one was uh, very fast. Gudra is kind of slower gameplay, but you can see we were in checkmate, right? Marnie Path was kind to us, I guess, in a way. Even if we don't heal there, though, right? So they still had to go after um, the Greninja because game was just on board for us. So even if the Marnie Path goes haywire there, as long as I find access to water energy, I don't lose. Hello, Mr. Tableman. Tablemon is a good boy. He put Greninja in his Gudra. So, I have no qualms with Tablemon. His list is great, to be honest. Let's see what he's playing today. Kiram. Okay. Ah, two very difficult cards. Um, Kiram, Kiram, Kiram. Because I have Colorus and Net here, I think I keep the gate. Because I'm going to be well on my way to gating early this game. Kiram does hit very hard. That's the issue. Belts are pretty important in this matchup, actually. Um, so let's get rid of a boss. And I guess I just do this stuff and pass. Gonna need some help from switches and nets in the next turn off the selecting and the chorus. No energy in hand when we play 14. That's pretty unfortunate. Not the worst of Marnies, honestly. Like, yes, losing Korra sucks, but we need switch outs for these confes if we want to do anything anyway. And energy would be great. Hey, that's all the things I wanted. Now I just need to hit Mirage Gate. How's that Marnie treating him? Alright, alright. Rapid freeze. From the hand. Oh, look at the threat. What if I Mirage Gate KO? Um, I will Flower Pick first here, because I want the option to use Greninja if I have to. Ah, very good. Show me the chorus. Okay, that's also fine. Actually, I can Greninja to draw to instead. I think this is better. Uh, so I should capture out Cram here. Ah, prized Cram. Okay. Definitely going to evolve. Really need to hit um, a supporter off this confey, to be honest. It's a shame. I mean, also, just having a cram here would be so huge. Just hit this bench another Gudra, and I'm in a really good spot, to be honest, so... Big low roll. No supporter low roll. Gonna be a pass. The good news is they didn't get any many engine mons down, so it's still a lot of work for them to do things. 
I'm not really expecting a big boss KO here. Yeah, just to freshen up with Marnie. Melanie is not bad, but it's not great. <clears throat> There's big boy VMAX. Let's see the wisdom. Show me the combo. And there it is. There it is. Uh, let's frog. Sheesh. Uh, this is fine. All right. So we are KOable from here. They're already at 270 with the discard of three. So they'd have to discard two more energy if they want to get the KO, or they can gust. They still have their Palkia V Star power available as well. So a few things for them to do. If they're whiffing, it's terrible for them. Did I toss my other belt? No, I didn't. The raw glaciated world to remove a bad top deck. That is galaxy brain. Saved? Okay, so it's not enough. Unless they V-Star power. Does he tempo V-Star power the one energy? He does. Okay, so he's literally just all in here. He's basically just praying I can't get a Mirage Gate off. Which is fair. Ah, there's our cram. Kinda pog. Because now I can hide without the need to panic. Uh, so I think I'll do that with Melanie here. Spit at him. So we're in a bit of danger, to be honest. If a goo goes down here, I'm in a bad way. It's pretty tricky for him too, though. I'm only at 220 hit points, though, so... It's possible. It's plausible. Uh, 
Okay, that's fine. So we're just going to try and gust this guy and hit. And then we only have one boss remaining in the deck after that, but I think it's still the right play. I can remove a lot of cards while I'm at it here. Um... Plus, the hand size is still kind of small. I don't think I give them energy with the training court. I think we just force hand disruption here as our best out. Interesting that he plays no, like, real draw engine, I guess. Ah, we got him. That was easy. We trapped him. Looks like his Marnies were pretty painful to him. <laughs> but we had to be hand disrupted anyways. Nice. So a clean sweep for Tempo Goo. We just set up and did it. <laughs> that's, that's really it. We got to see the Greninja in action against the Palkia matchup, which I'm really happy about. Um... And, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. We just kind of did the thing. We're just kind of big and a bit awkward for people to deal with. Uh, we even missed, like, in that game, we actually got very unlucky by prizing the cram and then whiffing the Mirage Gate. So we wasted a turn and were still, like, very far ahead. So let me know what you guys think about Tempo Goo. I think it's legit. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in another Lost Origin video tomorrow. Cheers.